Welcome to my viewpoint. Uh, this subject is about planning. Well, actually, it's about jigsaw puzzles. And jigsaw puzzles, I realise, uh, and I've worked out, are a very useful tool for an analogy regarding to planning uh, and the way we can go ab about planning. So, why a jigsaw puzzle? Well, when you think about the standard jigsaw puzzle, what's it look like? We have a picture, like so, and this picture in it may say have a stream or river running through it like so it'll have some clouds up in the sky mine are blue clouds well they're sky clouds which put white in the middle they're blue actually really and then uh, we could have a boat house like this for instance on the side of the river right and we could have some trees in here so there's here's my grass background right along here and have some trees in it like so and maybe a car park over here for example and some other um, activity going on down here a playground or something like this for instance so just a simple picture so where am I going with this well when you think about a jigsaw puzzle if anybody still does them anymore um, what are the first things you do the first thing you tend to do is get all the pieces out and you look for all the edges, don't you? The border pieces, the outside, the framework of the picture. Right, this is the bigger picture of things, in a sense. You always got the box to show you the picture. The next thing you do is to break down the pieces into their relevant parts of the picture. Right? So we have blue river, but we also have blue and white sky, or blue, blue sky with uh, white clouds. So they are white clouds, really, just I can't bother to paint on the blue in. The point being, you will collect all the different pieces together relevant to that part of the picture, don't we? So you might have quite a few pieces here. So you might have a lot of blue sky, so a lot, but also there's a different complexity. So you've got amount of jigsaw pieces there as well as the complexity of that part of the picture. And that defines how long it might take for each part to do. Okay. Now the reason why I'm going through all that is because while I'm doing a plan, for example, here's my product or my picture, if you like. This is the end product. And if you watch other videos, I talk about product-based planning, right? one of my favorite subjects. Here we have all our major pieces. And then we break those down into smaller segments. So each of these are making up a bigger part of the picture, for example. Right? Right, so. So what you could argue is that this is my overall picture. These are all the major components of my picture. And I'll break down certain parts of, say, the boathouse, which will have a different type of roof. It might have some windows. You might have the, the, the door here. You may have the grass here where I've got a car park and I've got trees. You may have bushes. I may have something else, got like a sand pit or something. But they're all part of the picture down here. The reason being, as I said, the number of pieces and the complexity will define how long it's going to take. So if I want to produce this part as my picture and I want to put that into my plan and I need to define how long it's going to take and in most cases if I can define I've only got a certain amount of time I have a time box don't I? Right? I have a time box and I'm going to define how long it's going to take me roughly to put those pieces together and that time box will be different to, a, say, a time box that will be for all the parts that fit into that part of the picture. So this time box may be 17 days. This one could be 22 days' worth of work. The point is that when you're planning and time boxes in the planning stage, the time boxes will have different lengths depending on the complexity of the objective of that particular time box. Don't get into the practice of every single time box is going to be exactly the same length. But if the time box is delivering an objective, each objective will have a certain amount of time due to complexity and the amount of work to be done, either the number of pieces to be fit together to actually complete the picture. Now, what is also very interesting is when you think about the picture and you look at all the pieces that are going to make up the boathouse, which parts do you think are the must-haves? And then which bits are the should-haves? So this helps you complete an understanding of what you might need to complete within your time box. Simply put, the must-haves are actually the border part of that picture. 
And why? Because that border will connect to the border of the trees or the park car park or the sky. And this allows you to connect the bigger pieces together. At least you've then got a framework of the picture. The should haves are the next line in because they support and support the picture and give it a bit of strength. And then all the could haves are the ones that are left inside. If you've only got a certain amount of time to complete the jigsaw, the artist will complete all the must haves. And if you've only managed to get that half, at least you know you've got a strong framework and you've got most of the bits in the middle nearly done. And you can add the pieces in later that are could haves. You can do those in operational change, for example. But they do not need the governance to make sure we're in the right place and holding the whole thing together. Right. And this is the whole point about the jigsaw. It gives you a good idea about food for thought, about how I can then time put my time boxes together and also therefore the relevant positioning of when I put those time boxes in my plan and when I need to actually deliver the work. Okay. Now there are considerations about work packages, for instance, where I've got to complete all of something, but the work package actually needs therefore to vary to give you that time frame because the only impact on there is the cost. And if you see some of the videos, I explained how the time boxes control the time frame, incremental stage, if you wish, and therefore the work you're doing within them uh, controls that, that time frame. So when you do a work package, as long as the work package overall is going to be less than the original time frame for the time boxes, then you're still quids in to keep the time box and that, that incremental on time. Anyway, just think about the jigsaw puzzle analogy. Very useful to thinking, why do we have time boxes that are different lengths? Thank you.